Hello and welcome back to Run Level Zero. Today we're going to look at Antrigos Linux. Uh, this is a distro that I've been wanting to review for quite some time. I actually installed it on my operating system, or rather I attempted to install it a couple of months ago. But at that time the installation media was having some trouble with Grub and I never could get it to boot afterwards. So last week they released an update and everything seems to be working fine. Antrigos is another Arch based distribution, which, if you look at the their website, tells you Antrigos, as its father, Arch Linux, is a rolling release distro. This means you don't have to worry about it if there's a new version of download, like in Ubuntu or Fedora. Uh, with a rolling release based distro, you will always have the latest updates just by making a regular update of your system software. The package manager downloads what you need. Now, Antrigos, which from my research means Ancestor, is more of a true Arch-based distro. Uh, unlike Manjaro Linux, Antrigos maintains the Arch repositories. So it, 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 where Manjaro has become more its own, it is Arch-based, but it's become more of its own entity, Antrigos, by maintaining the Arch distros, is still Arch. Now, uh, Antrigos came out of uh, Cinearch, which was basically Arch Linux with the Cinnamon desktop, but they ran into some issues in early 2013 with maintaining a current version of Cinnamon. So they changed the, the default desktop to GNOME 3 and then allowed the, the user to choose what desktop environment they wanted at startup. So when you're installing, you have the option of choosing GNOME 3, uh, I believe KDE is in there, XFCE, Cinnamon, or Razor QT. So you, you can really choose your customized environment. Uh, according to their website, Antrigos's purpose is to provide a modern, elegant, and powerful operating system based on one of the best Linux distributions out there, Arch Linux says we are the evolution of Cinearch, the project from we were born, but now we're giving freedom to users, letting them choose between different desktop environments and setups. So yeah, let's let's just jump into it. Let's take a look at it, see what you get. Now it isn't I do have it installed here in a virtual. As with all my other virtual installs, I've given it two dedicated processors and two gigabytes of RAM to work with. So I did choose to give it the uh, the default installation which is a GNOME 3 desktop. So let's take a look at it. GNOME 3 uh, is a user-friendly desktop however it's foreign to what many beginning users w will be used to. Um, it, it definitely is not a traditional layout. You get one desktop by default and one panel across the top. Right clicking the desktop will allow you to access the settings menu or change the system background. The settings menu will pull up your control panel where you're going to do all of your system configurations and it's just a basic control panel. Everything you need to administer your system is here from changing the background and notifications, mouse and touchpad options, sound, power management to administering user accounts. Everything is all done right here. Across the panel to the top beginning on the right you have a notification area, battery monitor, volume control, as well as your session manager you can control your volume from the drop down as well as your brightness, access your battery and power settings, power off the machine, lock the session, or once again access the settings menu. In the center of this panel there is a system clock and calendar and you can do your scheduling tasks here. And on the far, far left hand side you'll see the activities menu. Clicking the Activities menu will bring up a searchable menu and virtual desktop manager. Favorites can be pinned to the bar on the left. So let's take a look at what we get by default. 
Clicking the icon on the bottom will pull up the Applications menu. There is a rather slim set of default applications installed, but they seem to have been chosen very well because they will meet the average user's daily needs. You have Archive Managers, which 7-Zip has already been installed, which will give you a, a wider range of archive files that you can manipulate. Cheese is installed for your webcam. Chromium is the web browser of choice. Empathy for messaging. The file manager, I believe, is Nemo, which we can pull that up. You see it has a fairly vanilla set of icons installed. Get back down there to that menu. The HP device manager is installed for uh, administering your HP hardware, if you have any. The LibreOffice suite is installed, which is kind of odd. LibreOffice installer is there as well. Print manager. Package management, installation, and removal of software is done by Pac-Man Pac -Man XG. And this is the first time I've seen Pac-Man XG. Give it our password here. It is a beta stage package manager, which you can, when you first launch it, you give it your password. Uh, you can get go to a package management menu, tasks menu, which will allow you to synchronize your mirror, update your system, re-download install packages. There's quite a bit of, of options, things you can do here, cleaning the cache. If you go into the package management area, it'll sync the repositories. And then from here, you can choose to search. Let's take a look for Firefox. You can search for your packages. Now, this seems to be a fairly powerful, robust uh, package management system, but it's not as beginner friendly as something like, say, the Ubuntu Software Center. So, this may be more comfortable for somebody who's intermediate or advanced as you're going to really have to know what you're looking for. Let's see, getting back to the menu, again you have your settings manager, shot well for your photos. Under the sundry sub menu, you have access to flash player, network connections, deconf editor which will allow you to directly edit system settings. This is something I would say if you're not more skilled in Linux, you really don't want to play around with it because although you can really customize your system using deconf. You can also screw it up pretty bad if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, transmission for your BitTorrent. Under Utilities submenu is the Archive Manager, Calculator, Disk Manager, System Monitor. The uh, GNOME Tweak tool is installed, which if you want to change your theme or your icon sets, uh, you can do that from here. Really customize the layout of your system. And let's take a peek at that system monitor. Let's see where we're running on this. This is just a base install. I haven't done any tweaks to it. And it's running on 391 meg of RAM. So that's not bad. That's, that's actually fairly competitive with a modern Linux desktop environment. XF burn is for burning your uh, optical media. And gedit is the text editor of choice. Now taking a look at that, let's pull open gedit, keep one open here. When we go back to the activities menu, you, see, you can see that your uh, open applications will be displayed here in this menu. You can change the focus if you have more than one open, or you can even close it from here. Your virtual desktop manager will always give you an empty desktop, so if you want to, you can drag and drop your applications from one virtual desktop to another. So that's pretty handy. We'll close that out. All told, uh, my experience with Antragos has been, you know, it's been pretty pleasant. It's been lightweight, it's been stable, it's been responsive. I've really enjoyed working it. I'm glad that they released their updated uh, installer media. I, I think one of the greatest strengths or some of the greatest strengths that Antergos has to offer is one, it is more of a true pure arch base, uh, kind of in keeping with uh, even like Archbang that, that is a pre-configured arch in that 
it maintains the arch repos and you have access to the AUR. Uh, it is highly configurable and I do really like the way that on installation it gives you the option of installing the desktop environment that you really want to work with. So I do suggest you download Antergos, give it a try, let me know what your experience is. Uh, don't forget to leave your questions, comments, or emotional outbursts below. I encourage discussion. Just please remember to keep it civil. And uh, I hope to be with you again soon for a new video. Thank you.